There is a loud scandal in the ranks of Russian Z patriots. The commander of the Chechen Special Forces, Akhmet, accused Russian soldiers of serious crimes against residents of the Kursk region. He made a frank statement in an interview with Russian propagandist Maxim Kalashnikov. Alodinov, responding to the claim that Kadyrovites are engaged in looting and other crimes in the combat zone, lashed out at the Russian armed forces. He claims that the Russian army commits many more crimes. I am currently in the Kursk direction. I immediately went to the head of the Kursk region Ministry of Internal Affairs and asked questions, what problems do you have with Akhmet? He smiled and said, 187 crimes have been committed by the military on our territory. These are murders, rapes and others. None of these crimes were committed by fighters of the Akhmet unit, Alodinov said. In fact, he acknowledged the disintegration of the Russian army. His revelations provoked a violent reaction from Russian Z patriots. The leader of the Kadyrovites was accused of discrediting the Russian armed forces. Odessa collaborator Igor Dimitriev also spoke out. He asked what crimes the Russian armed forces are committing in the captured territories of Ukraine, if they do not even spare the residents of their own Kursk region. Their Apti Alodinov gives such discredit that no liberal can do it. He says that Russian servicemen in the Kursk region committed 187 crimes against the civilian population. This is in two months on a small patch of native land and on a large territory without a law enforcement system in two and a half years?" wrote the traitor of Ukraine. He stated that in the current situation, the Ukrainians' reluctance to have anything in common with the so-called Russian world seems entirely reasonable. Ukraine's incursion into Russia's Kursk region is now entering its third month, with scores of settlements still firmly under its control. The operation marked the first time foreign troops entered Russian territory since World War II, embarrassing the Kremlin and proving to Kiev's backers and the rest of the world that Ukraine's military was not perpetually on the back foot. Some nine weeks later, Ukraine's advance has stalled, and neither side has made major gains or counterattacks in recent days. NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta addressed reports of North Korea allegedly dispatching troops to Russia for its war in Ukraine, saying that the move would mark a significant escalation. Speaking in Tallinn, Ruta said that South Korean President Yoon suk yeol is sending experts to Brussels soon to brief ambassadors at the 32-nation military alliance. That will now happen early next week, and then we will see whether North Korea is indeed, or not supporting Russia's illegal war in Ukraine," Ruta said. If that would be the case, if they would be sending troops to Ukraine, that would mark a significant escalation," he added. South Korea's spy agency said last week it had confirmed that North Korea sent 1,500 special operation forces to Russia this month. On Tuesday, the country said it could consider supplying weapons to Ukraine in response. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said his government had intelligence that 10,000 North Korea soldiers were being prepared to join invading Russian forces. In 2023, Hamas-led militants blew holes in Israel's security fence and stormed in, killing some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and abducting another 250. Israel's offensive in Gaza has killed over 42,000 Palestinians, according to local health authorities, who do not differentiate between militants and civilians. The war has destroyed large areas of Gaza and displaced about 90% of its population of 2.3 million people. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development said in a report that it could take 350 years for Gaza's battered economy to return to its precarious pre-war level. I welcome Estonia's significant contribution to NATO's high readiness forces and your efforts to further improve readiness. By spending over 3% of your GDP on defense, Estonia is truly leading by example. 
and I know you intend to invest even more in our shared security in the coming years. Investing more is something all allies will need to, will need to do to meet our capability targets. This is essential for us in order to continue to deter and defend against the challenges we face. Here in Estonia, you know how close some of those challenges can be. Um, I asked the president and, and he said I will absolutely do that uh, to send experts from the Republic of Korea uh, to brief the North uh, Atlantic Council. That will now happen early next week. Um, and then we will see whether North Korea is indeed or not uh, supporting um, Russia's illegal uh, war in Ukraine. If that would be the case, if they would be sending troops uh, to Ukraine, that would mark a significant escalation. That would really be uh, uh, important, a significant escalation. So at this moment, uh, I cannot confirm it uh, other than that we will get the latest update from South Korea early next week. Thank you very much.